Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Rex and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. It is Sunday, December the 26th and today, Pastor Jeff will be sharing with us from the Word of God titled, Why Church in 2022? But first, please join us in some Christmas music as we glorify the Lord.
If you would, if you have your Bibles, turn with me. We're not going to start here right away, but we'll eventually get there. Turn with me to Proverbs 14, 12. Proverbs 14, 12. The title of today's message, an unconventional title. The top nine reasons not to go to church in 2022. See, I've always got to start something, don't I? I said that to my wife last night. I said, guess what my title is? She says, what? I said, top nine reasons not to go to church in 2022. She says, that's a good one. She, <laughs> well, that's not, no, that's not a good one. That's, but she knows me. She, I'm leading you down a path. But I do have nine reasons why people don't go to church. Now that Christmas has passed, with the new year quickly approaching, we all tend to start looking for things or at things that we may want to do differently during the coming year, 2022. One of those for some of us may be to attend church more regularly. According to the most recent polls, about two-thirds of Americans consider themselves to be Christian. Now, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. I'm gonna, I said, I'm going to put up a post on Facebook. And here's what the, the Facebook post said. And I did this just to stir things up a little bit. I like to stir things up a little bit here and there. The Facebook post said, here's a hard question. If you don't go to church, if you don't read your Bible, if you rarely pray, what makes you a Christian? I think that's a hard question for people that don't necessarily do those things, but yet 65% of us, two-thirds of us, claim to be Christian. Well, if you don't go to church, if you don't, if you don't read the Bible, if you rarely pray, what makes you a Christian? What is a Christian? Well, there's lots of different thoughts on what the term Christian actually meant, but in its easiest form, it was a term given to the first followers of Christ. So I keep that same term. Being a follower of Christ would be to be a Christian. 
If you don't go to church, if you don't read the Bible, if you rarely pray, what makes you a Christian? Here's why people don't go to church. I got nine ways here. Why some people don't go to church. Number one, this is my favorite. My favorite to pick on and groan within myself. And I don't, please don't take me as being judgmental. Although, you know, it may come off that way, uh, but, it, but it's really not because I really honestly see these as excuses, convenient excuses, just so that we can do what we want to. The first one, we worship God in our own way. It's why we don't go to church. We worship God in our own way. Oh, yeah? What way? <laughs> I know. I know. It's like, what way is, what way is that? <laughs> Just, the, you know, sit, well, you know, we, uh, um, you know, there's this, you know, maybe TV preacher that we watch every now and then. We worship God in our own way. That's, that's the, I think that actually 37% of the people said that we worship God in our own way because it's a hard question. It's a hard question. You don't expect somebody to smack you upside the head with that one. It's a hard question. We worship God in our own way. Number two, uh, the uh, 28% of the people that don't go to church um, said that they're not believers. Got me on that one. Hey, if you don't believe in God, it's like there's nothing, there's nothing that I can do with that. I can't argue. No, the first one I can pick on you a little bit for. You know, we worship God in our own way. Well, are you worshiping God the way that He wants you to worship Him? Have you found anything else out about Him? Do you know about God? Second one, they're not believers. I don't believe in God. Okay, you got me on that one. We could have an honest conversation about that, and that's going to be cool. Okay. Uh, third one. I don't understand this. No reason is very important. You would think I would read over this stuff before I came up here, huh? No reason is very important. We're going to skip to number four. We're going to skip to number four. Reasons why people don't go to church. They have, oh, here's, here's one. Here's one. They haven't found a house of worship. That they, I haven't found a church home. A church, are you looking? When I went to church for a long time, and then I took a break. Why did I take a break? Because I wanted to. I just wanted to chill for a while. You know, I was heavily involved in the church. I was doing many things in the church. Kind of got burned out a little bit, you know, and I just wanted to chill for a while. Wanted to chill for a while. So honestly, that's why I didn't go to church. But I could have easily said I haven't, I, you know, I could have easily taken the holy answer and said, I haven't found a place of worship that suited me yet. Why are you still looking? No, I haven't. And okay, honestly, it comes out now. They're lazy like I was. So I didn't feel like going, you know. So they haven't found a house of worship that they, that they like. Before I lit upon here more than two years ago, just over two years ago, I went to four or five different churches. I went every, because I determined in my heart, I better get my butt back to church. I need, I need to have that fellowship with people. I need to be reaching out to people. I need to be in touch with God more. I was still reading my Bible and doing other things, but I was missing that vital component, which was church. So I went to churches until I found a church, and I found a home here. So 23% of the people. I found you. I did. I did, Vern. I found you. And that's what my wife said when she came in. Um, she's on a different schedule, so she doesn't always come Sunday mornings. Um, but when she came in our Christmas Eve service, she says it felt like home there. She felt so welcomed because of everyone. And that was, that was just a complete blessing. She felt like it was home. All right, number five. I don't like the way that pastor preaches. That's a, <laughs> that's a good one, ain't it? <laughs> what are you going to do about that? That's okay. I don't like the sermons. Let's, let's make it in general. That way we're not just picking on one pastor in, in specific. But I don't like the sermons. Maybe they make you feel guilty. Some sermons do that, no matter what. You ever, you ever have those times where the pastor's preaching and you'd swear... 
that he was talking directly about you? You ever had that happen? I used to have that happen a lot. It's kind of like, dang, I'm going to stop talking to pastor, you know, telling him all my goods, and then he's using them up there in a sermon. You don't like the sermons. Some people don't like the sermons. Nine reasons why people don't go to church. Number five, they don't like the sermons. Number six, they don't feel welcome. Well, that's a bummer. If that indeed is the case, and it's not just a smoke screen for not going to church, I mean, you've got to feel welcome somewhere, you know. I would say out of all the churches that I visited a couple of years ago, I felt pretty welcome at all of them. I was greeted with all of them. Pastor came over and seen me, I think, on uh, uh, every church that I went to, whether it was bigger church or smaller church. So I felt pretty welcome. I haven't run into that yet. It's very unfortunate if people do not feel welcome in the church that they attend. Number seven, now we're getting down to the truth of it. I don't have the time. It's kind of truthful, but it's kind of not. 12% of the people said they don't have the time for church. I would rather think that it should be stated, I don't find the time. We find the time for the things that we deem important, don't we? I don't have the time for church. Sunday morning is when I have my coffee and sit around. <laughs> that's, a, in the, that's, that's why I don't have the time. It's, that's where I sit at home and just relax because I work so much throughout the week. Nah, it's not really a good reason. A lot of people said it, though. A lot of people said it. Poor health or mobility reasons. They can't get to church. That's a bummer. Because that's, that's a real deal there. That's a real deal. And we as churches need to, need to find a way to help people that want to come to church come to church. Here's another one, number nine, finally. Why don't people go to church? Nine reasons. Remember the title of our message today, Top Nine Reasons Not to Go to Church? Some of them are good, some of them aren't. Most of them aren't. But the last one, poor health, or you can't get there. Or uh, number nine, there's no house of, there's no church. If you're in an outlying area, there ain't no church around. That's a shame. That's a shame. I would drive for long ways to go to church. I, I drive a lot anyway for a living, so it wouldn't be nothing for me to drive a half hour or longer to go to church. That wouldn't be anything. So those are the reasons why people give some, few, two, <laughs> let's get down to two of them I think are, are pretty valid, while the other ones just fall down to stuff we don't feel like doing. People say that we worship God in our own way. Oh, remember that scripture I told you about, Proverbs 14, 12? People wor I worship God in my own way. This was the biggest one that, that really, really hit me. It says in Proverbs 14, 12, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. I worship God my own way. Be careful of that one. That's what most of the people said. So what examples do we have in the Bible in regards to going to church or a place of worship? In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. This is what the first, the early Christians did. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to getting together, fellowshipping, breaking bread, and to prayer. We have biblical example. We don't really need to figure out how to worship God in our own way. We have a biblical example. How about, how about the, the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 16? He, being Jesus, went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Jesus of Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, on the church day, he went to the synagogue. That's what they would do. They go to the synagogue. 
and as was his custom, he stood up to read. That was the part I wanted to focus on, as was his custom. What is your custom here? It seems as though, as is our custom, we meet here every Sunday morning at 1030. Praise the Lord for that. We're following, what? The examples of Jesus. That's a good self. We're, we're devoting ourselves to the, the teaching of Pastor Rex, to fellowship with each other, to the breaking of bread and to the prayer that we say for each other and for those who are in need. Acts 17, verse 2. As was his custom, Paul, the Apostle Paul, went into the synagogue and on three Sabbath, day, three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the Scriptures. Here we have another example. Church is the place to be. We don't have to figure out how to worship God in our own way. We don't have to come up with reasons. We should just be for real. Why don't you go to church? I don't feel like it. Okay, I've been there. Dude, ah, I've not felt like it before. I've not felt like it for years at a time. I just haven't felt like it. But then something would happen in my life where things would change and I would feel that need to go to church again. Why? We've covered all the reasons why people may not go to church. Mostly, what I would consider, I don't feel like it. But a couple of good ones where you can't make it there, there's no church around you. What, now, now that we've covered nine reasons not to go to church or why people don't go to church in the coming year, what are the reasons to go to church? Well, I've got ten of them. <laughs> Only had nine, not two. I've got ten reasons to go to church in 2022. 81% of people, when polled, 81% of people said the number one answer to become closer to God. I think that's, I think that's pretty valid. That's why you come to church. When you think of where God's at, he's, you know, now God lives within us, of course. But if you don't go to church that much, it's kind of like that's where you go to meet God, is church. And we come to church, and sometimes we feel his presence here. Sometimes we don't, sometimes we do. But it's not about feeling. It's not about feelings. We know that this is the house of the Lord the house that we have now. We are the temple of God. He lives within us. We're in the house of the Lord. 81% of people come to church to become closer to God. Do you want to become closer to God? This is a great place to start. We've given examples already of what they did in the Bible to become closer to God, how Jesus, how the Apostle Paul went to church, how the first Christians devoted themselves to the pastor and to prayer, to reading the scriptures. Become closer to God, 81% of the people. Number two reason, to come to church. 69% of the people said this, so their children will have a moral foundation. Amen to that. Sometimes we all like to complain about these young kids what is the problem? These young parents sometimes. Yeah. Bring your children to church. 69% of the people who come to church want to have children that have been brought up morals, morally correct. Where do we get our morals from? Our morals come from the Bible. It comes from God. God is the author of morals and ethics. That's where we find out what's right and what's wrong. Number three, why should we come to church in 2022 or why you may want to? To become a better person. Isn't that nice? I mean, sometimes we think that to ourselves, and that's okay. Although Jesus accepts us just the way we are. But he does want us to change. 
It's, it's kind of a funny thing to say that Jesus loves us just the way we are because that means, oh, we never have changed. Jesus loves me just the way I am. Oh, no. Jesus accepts you just the way you are, that you are. But if you're a dirty, rotten sinner, come on, somebody's got to change here. You've got to change. Jesus wants you to change, and he's going to help you. You come to church to be a better person. I like being a better person. I like it when people like me. I had a, a friend at the office. He's still at the office. His name is Jim. Nobody used to like Jim. Everybody loves Jim now. He's still loud, and he's brash, and he's kind of like I am, but a little bit more, you know, maybe times three. But <laughs> thanks, Bert. <laughs> So he's, he's a little loud, and, but they like him. Nobody used to like him. But me and Jim started hanging around together. And I let him know, dude, people don't like you. Everybody likes to be liked. Jim wanted to become a better person. He wanted to become a better person. Church is a wonderful place to do that because you're hanging around with better people. People who are just like you, trying to be better, not better people. I, uh, th they came out kind of funny, but people just like yourself who are trying to be better people also. Number four, why come to church? For comfort in times of trouble or sorrow. Where else can you go? Has any of you, I've been in that spot many times in my life. Where else can you go but God. That's sometimes the only place when you run into hardship, health issues, financial issues. Sometimes God, and thank God that he puts us or allows us to get in these spots. Thank God that he brings us to that point where we've got nowhere else to go. Where do I find God at? Let's try to find him in church. Amen. Number five. Why go to church? Because the sermons are actually very valuable. They're very... Have you listened to Pastor Rex? There's wisdom. He, he's repeating the wisdom of God in a way that we can understand it. The past, that's the pastor's job, to share what is in the Bible, not crazy stuff, but what is in the Bible, the wisdom of God, in a way that we can understand it. Some people come to church because they find... 59% of people come to church because they find the sermons valuable. Number six, 57% of the people come to become a part of the faith community. They like hanging around with us. That's like me. I like hanging around with you guys. That's why I come. I like to hang around with you guys. I like to have fellowship. I like to have a good time. This is my, this is my extended family. We all have an extended family here. Well, each, there's, there's no one here that I couldn't call when I needed something. Somebody's going to say yes. I, I might have to make it through quite a few of you, but somebody's going to say yes. Somebody's going to help me if I needed some help. And I think that goes the same with all of us. We're each other's extended family. 57% of the people come for that extended family. So that teaches us to be nice and, 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 and greeting and, and peaceful with others as they come into the church. Number seven, to continue, people come, 37%, we've dropped down quite a bit here from 57, now we're down to 37% of the people, come to continue their family's religious traditions. It's almost like out of obligation, which is number eight. They feel obligated to go. That's, that's pretty darn close. And that's a bummer, but it's a good thing. At least you're coming to church, and you're hearing the word, and sometimes, even though you're not paying attention, maybe all the time, it still kind of sinks in. It still kind of sinks in, as long, long as you don't become a religious bigot because of it. You know, well, I go to church and you don't. As long as you don't fall down that path. But... I kind of think any reason to come to church is a good one. So that's, that's, where, that's where I fall at into this. To continue their family's religious traditions. We've always went, our family has always went to church. 
be nice if you could get something out of it. But it's better that you're here than if you're not here. Or if you feel obligated to go, it's better that you're here than if you're not here. Number nine, 19% of the people come to meet new people or to socialize. Socialize. I think we all do a little bit of that. That's like a benefit. <coughs> to do that specifically, yeah, I really don't care about God. You know, I'm just going to meet chicks. <laughs> How about that one? <laughs> I think that's why Phil comes. <laughs> I'm teasing. If we're just going to meet people, okay, we, we've got to come a little bit further than that. But once again, you'll find that whether it be women or men, people are wonderful. I mean, we all, we all tend to put on our church faces a little bit when we come to church. We say the right things. And sometimes every other word is praise the Lord. And sometimes we're not real people. But when you get a family, when you get a family, like I would consider that we are here. Everybody's for real. Everybody's a real person. Everybody that I've talked to is wonderful. And it's not, it's, I, I don't see so many church faces here. I'll put it that way. But we come here and we're real with one another. Number 10 the reason why you maybe want, want to, or why 16% of the people want to come to church is to please their family, their spouse, or their partner. Ah, my wife's been bugging me to go to church forever. I'll go. All right, I'll go. As long as you just stop it. As long as you stop it. You know, you're going to have to do stuff for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's always the caveat, you know. That's okay. Once again, in my humble opinion, I think any reason to come to church is a good one because it rubs off, just like my buddy Jim at the office. I rubbed off on him, I believe. Jim wants to be a good person now. Nobody liked him. Everybody loves him now. Um, and Jim is a Christian. Jim is a Christian because he took that moral teaching that I had shared with him. And he applied it. It sunk in after a while. It took a few years, but it sunk in. Even if you're here for reasons as we get toward the end that weren't the greatest reasons in the world to continue family traditions, you feel obligated to go, you just come to socialize with people, it's still a good thing because that Word of God is sinking into you. After all this, we've heard the good, the bad, and the ugly. We've had all the reasons why people choose not to come to church. More compelling reasons, I believe, why we should go to church. After all this, you must really just decide for yourself. Will you become a real follower of Jesus or will you worship God in your own way? There's a way that seems right unto a man but the end is the way to death. We have to be careful of doing things our own way because God has told us specifically. That's where the rule book is. We have the rule book here. There is a rule book. You can't make up stuff on your own. Will you make up what you want to believe and do what seems right to you or will you stop to find out what God says is right? You can't make up stuff on your own. Everybody does that too much. And it's just excuses to do whatever you want to. People will justify anything they want to do. But if we're truthful with ourselves, we'll stop and say, okay, there's got to be a rule book. I mean, there's a rule book for everything. God is the ultimate real rule book. Will you dedicate your life to the one who gave his life for you or will you continue to live your life by your own terms and believe that being a good person will get you into heaven one day? There's justification at its finest. I'm a good person. As I compare myself with an axe murderer. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? As I compare myself with a bank robber, I'm a good person. That's generally what occurs. We start comparing ourselves among ourselves, which the Bible says is not wise. Will you dedicate your life to the one who gave his life for you? 
this coming year? Or will you continue to live life by your own terms? There's a way that seems right to a man, but the ways thereof end in death. Will you pray and ask God not just for help when you need it, but mostly for direction in living the right way? Here is wisdom applied. God's, God wants to hear it. When we've got stuff going wrong, He wants to hear what's going wrong. But He also wants us to ask for direction so that things don't always go wrong. We're always running to God with our problems. But if we would go to Him initially and ask for direction, we'd have the solution to our problems and our problems wouldn't be as great. One last scripture I want to share with you and I will wrap everything up. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25 says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. We can't do that unless we get together. Let us consider how we may, cons may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. That's what the rule book says. That's what the Bible says. You can worship God in your own way, but let's be for real. Find a way, any way. We've given you 10 reasons. We've talked about 10 reasons why you should come to church. There's every reason in the world why you can find you don't want to go to church, just excuses. The Statler brothers, excuses, excuses, you'll hear them every day. Has anybody heard that? I knew Vern would have heard that one. Reasons why people give not to go to church. Let's find a way this coming year to do those things which are pleasing to God, to do things that will benefit you. Everybody wins in the long run. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your message this morning. Thank you for those who are listening, Lord. Thank you for those who would hear and do and act upon your word. Thank you for those who do gather together. That your name would be glorified and your word would go forth. We thank you and we give you praise. We ask for your direction and guidance this coming year that in all things, we would bring your name glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the town of Judah, here is your God. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our Sunday morning service. If you have been blessed by today's message and you are watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click on the notification bell to be notified of our future videos. If you would like to support this ministry with your offerings or donations, please send them to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene, 8499 North Dort Highway, Mount Morris, Michigan, 48458. Or now you can also show your support through donating at our Patreon page, which is located at patreon.com slash mosaicness. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your family, and you'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dort Highway. It's Sunday morning at 1030. We pray the Lord would bless you so that you then will become a blessing to others.